everyone it is danny and welcome to this update video i hope you're doing amazing and we are 69 days out from the official start of the hurricane season so later in the video i'll talk briefly about the hurricane season but for now we're looking at the infrared satellite imagery of the north atlantic and we can see that system which extends into the caribbean so it brought impacts to uh, parts of the bahamas is still bringing impacts and uh, even other areas such as cuba florida experienced quite a bit uh, in terms of inclement weather as it made its way through and even in cuba there was hail as well so i saw some footage from there and there's uh, there's been some flooding there's been hail so uh, fortunately the system is making its way out but as for the other caribbean islands for most other places much is not really happening and uh, for the lesser Antilles there are some clouds coming in from the east which may bring some shower activity here's a look at the rainfall forecast as we're going to be heading through today and the more colorful we see these shadings the more rain is expected so there could be some additional periods of heavy rain across parts of the uh, especially central and southern Bahamas and Turks and Caicos Islands as well and uh, even for some spots in Cuba a few showers may move by the Cayman Islands Jamaica Hispaniola Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands and as I said uh, there are those clouds moving in from the east which may bring some intermittent showers across the lesser Antilles. ABC Islands uh, and also San Andreas Providencia likely to remain on the dry side today down to northern South America for the Guyanas. A whole lot of rain not expected but there could be some showers same story for Venezuela and our parts of Colombia will remain active and then towards Central America Panama Costa Rica parts of Nicaragua uh, Honduras even some spots in El Salvador, southern Guatemala. A few showers may loiter around, but for the most part, it may be a pretty sunny day today. Wind forecast. So the darker we see the shade of purple going to the blue, we're going up to around 20 knots or so. And uh, here we can see that as we're going to be heading through today, uh, it's going to be windy across parts of the Caribbean. Maybe uh, winds up to around 15, 20 knots with higher gusts. But as the day progresses, uh, things may calm down for a bit. And then as it relates to the wave height for today, so uh, right now, uh, very, very active offshore of the United States and in the vicinity of Bermuda. We can see those orange and those red shadings out there. So some of those wave heights up to 15, even 17, 18, 19 feet offshore. And it's going to get worse because another area of low pressure is likely to uh, form and deepen out there as we head into uh, late tomorrow, go into Tuesday. And we can see some of those purple and those whitish shadings popping up. So we're going uh, well over 20 feet in terms of the wave heights so it will be very active uh very active out there with that next low pressure that's going to form it could uh form along the front and eventually detach from it and let's see if it'll do anything interesting over the next few days but i'll be keeping my eyes on it and i'll be keeping you posted as per usual now we're looking at the sea surface temperature chart here for the caribbean and we can see that it's generally around 27 and 28 degrees celsius right now in the vicinity of the caribbean the gulf is also slowly warming up as we can see offshore the uh, uh bay of campeche area right there and also in parts of the eastern gulf things are warming up as we're going to be approaching the eventual start of hurricane season on june 1st and out in the tropical atlantic is also warming up matter of fact above average for the time of year so sea surface temperatures uh, within the tropical Atlantic already supportive of tropical cyclone development and when compared to the previous uh, 43 years or so this year so far is the warmest on record in the Atlantic basin and I believe the world on a whole now this is a graph of the average sea surface temperature for the Atlantic the North Atlantic and uh here we can see all these other gray squiggly lines around. We can see the months of the year, January through December, and also the temperature on the y-axis. So the higher up we see these lines, the higher the temperature is. That bold black line is representative of 2024, and the latest update from this graph was back on the 22nd of March, so on Friday. And we can see that this even surpasses last year, which is that orange line we see so the average temperature across the North Atlantic is kind of in record territory right now, I would say. So it is very, very warm out there and it is likely to get warmer because we're heading to summer. So naturally, the North Atlantic gets 
、uh, warmest around that time, but temperatures are running above. Average and that's really likely to exacerbate the effects of the hurricane season. Hence, the reason many sources are calling for a very, very active season. Matter of fact, we'll have a lot more predictions rolling out as we head into the next couple of weeks. And as I mentioned, on a global scale, it's also above average. So this is for the world. And、uh, again, March twenty second, the latest update. And here we can see that since January first, going out to、uh, late March, the global temperatures. Have been above average, well,、uh, well above average at that. So、uh, heading back to the Atlantic Basin now, in terms of the hurricane season,、uh, El Nino is going away. La Nina is going to take hold. And、uh, speaking of, I want to take a look at the precipitation anomaly for May from the various climate models. So here we have NMME, the first one here. So this is for May. The green going to those blue shadings indicates above average precipitation. The whites indicate that things are going to be pretty much normal, and the yellows indicate below average precipitation, meaning that it's going to be drier in those areas, and the greens, blues, wetter in those areas. So we can see that for May, this model is certainly expecting that、uh, there will be above average rain across most of the Caribbean islands, even parts of northern South America, Central America, as well. The CFS climate forecast system is also showing something similar, seeing a bit more、uh, of some dry spots around, but we definitely see that green shading across parts of the Caribbean, indicating above average rainfall. And then the CANSIPS model also showing that there could be above average rain throughout most of the Caribbean and parts of northern South America. So. We're definitely seeing that these models are in agreement about what's coming, and、uh, for that reason, I really think that we're going to be seeing preseason developments, maybe one or more systems forming before the official start of the hurricane season. And soon and very soon, we'll start to have these tropical waves rolling off Africa. They usually start、uh, early May, and I wouldn't be surprised if they start earlier this year again, above average temperatures. So that is really going to be helping out to fuel atmospheric、uh, instability and those thunderstorms out there. But of course, there are other factors that play into what happens. So I'll be keeping you guys posted in terms of that, and、uh, that is pretty much what I wanted to share with you in this update. Video. So again, there is still that low pressure system out there, bringing impacts to parts of the Bahamas, even Cuba, and eventually another airflow pressure is going to form associated with it and could detach and loiter around. Let's see if it wants to do anything, wants to gain some tropical characteristics over the coming days. I'll keep my eyes on what's happening and keep you posted as usual. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll respond when I can. And remember to always be weatherwise.